Hello, calculus friends. So today we are going to talk about the derivative of exponential and logarithmic functions. But I'm going to split this up into two videos where this one is going to be focused on graphs and what things look like graphically and what we can kind of predict and investigate. And then the next video is going to be on actual algebraic manipulation of those derivatives. So let's get to it. Um, we are in my favorite place, uh, which is Desmos. And you'll notice Desmos is a vote on top because it's election day when I'm making this video. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to write the function y equals e to the x. e to the x is what's called an exponential function. And you're probably thinking, well, yeah, duh, I know it's an exponential. But here's what you probably don't know. If I asked you what's the difference between an exponential function and a power function, that's where things get a little murkier. So I want to take a second just to talk about that. So e to the x is an exponential function. So when I have something like y equals e to the x or y equals 4 to the x, those are exponential functions because it's a number raised to an x power. As compared to y equals x squared or y equals x to the 3 halves, those are power functions because in that case you have x raised to a number. When we take the derivative of power functions, we bring down the power and reduce it by one. That is not how derivatives of exponential functions work. Okay, so get that out of your head right now. Power functions and exponential functions do not have the same derivative. Not all exponents are equal. That's what you need to understand here. So we know that we have an exponential function when we have a number raised to an x. And that's what we have right here. So y equals e to the x is what I've written down so far. And now let's try to take that derivative. So if I want to take that derivative, what I'm actually going to do first to make the notation look nicer is I'm going to call this f of x equals e to the x. And that's in green. And now here, number two, I'm going to write f prime of x. That's blue or purple. Wait a second. Where'd my green one go? Turn off the purple. There's the green one. There's the purple. Whoa. The green one and the purple one are the same. What does that tell me? That tells me that e to the x is its own derivative. That's right, people. That thing you're always afraid of, that e thing, it is fantastic when you get to calculus. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So that's thing number one we've learned. All right. Well, what if I were to change this instead of e to the x, what if I made e to the 2x? Now the green one is e to the 2x, and the purple one is its derivative. Okay, so they're definitely not the same. I mean, they look a lot alike, though, so they're probably both still exponential. I wonder how they're different. So I'm going to come back over here for a second. And I'm going to write y equals e to, or g of x. You know what? That's what I call it. g of x, type though, equals e to the 2x. There we go. There's that thing again. Except what I'm going to do is on each of these, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to change that to a table. So there's e to the 2x written as a table. And down here, I'm going to change this to a table as well. And there's that one. So this is my original, and this is my derivative, 0 0.018, 0 0.036, 0 0.135, 0 0.270, 1, 2, 7, 14, 54 and a half, 109. How does this derivative table relate to this original table. And hopefully some of you are at home going, oh, pick me, pick me. I'm pretty sure that's a double. I'm pretty sure that my derivative happens to be twice the original. So let's check this out. F prime of X is purple. Let's graph Y equals two times E to the two X. There's my derivative. Here's what I think the derivatives, blue and purple, match. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the x. Let's try e to the 3x. 
So there's e to the 3x. The purple is its derivative. And if we try to follow a pattern here, maybe that purple derivative is 3 times the original. Look at that. Purple, green, purple, green. It is. Okay. Okay, we're doing all right. What if I made it instead of like e to the 3x? What if I made it e to the 3 plus x? So green is e to the 3 plus x. The derivative is purple. Oh, there's e to the 3 plus x. That one's its own derivative again. So I lost the 3. Hmm. Okay. What if I made that 3 plus 2x? Okay, so now my derivative and my original are different. So green is the original. Purple is the derivative. Hmm, I should probably look at the table again. So let's grab this thing and build a table for it. Let's grab this thing and build a table for it. All right, so... Here's my original, 0 0.36, 0 0.73, 2.7, 5.4, 20, 40, 148, 2, Oh, I doubled it again. My derivative is double my original graph. So if I come back here and say, all right, here's f prime of x. f prime of x seems to be 2 times f of x. Let's see if that's true. So I'm going to turn off my original for a second. Here's my derivative. Here's what I think my derivative is. Green equals purple. So what's happening here? Well, I'll tell you what's happening here. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. If instead of x, I have f of x, that derivative changes. So the derivative of e to f of x is going to be the original times the derivative of the exponent. So let's try that with something else a little bit more complicated. Let's do f of x equals e to the x squared. So there's the graph of e to the x squared. The derivative, which would be f prime, is going to be y equals the original times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2x. Now, first, let's see if that makes sense. If my original is this black graph, my original decreases and then increases. So my derivative should be negative and then positive. It is. Now, let's check that against f prime of x, which is blue. Blue and red match. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of e to the anything with an x is itself times the derivative of the exponent. That's what we got. Okay, where are we going to go next? Well, we're going to go to logarithms next. And let me erase this, and I'm going to pause this and erase, and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of logarithms, but we are going to focus on the natural log. So y equals or f of x equals ln x. First things first, you need to know what this graph looks like. We're going to use this graph a lot. You need to be able to picture it in your head. So try to like burn it in there somewhere. All right, that's a sketch that on your brain. The graph of y equals ln x has an asymptote along the y-axis, and then it increases along the asymptote up to 1 and then kind of almost increases like a square root function after that. It's not a square root function, but it has a very similar growth pattern to it. So this is what y equals ln x looks like. And if I think about the derivative before I graph the derivative, ln x is increasing this entire time. So I know that my derivative needs to be positive the entire time. And I know that my derivative should be super duper positive because it's steep here. And then not quite so positive later on, but definitely still positive. So let's see what f prime of x looks like. Oh, it looks like that. Okay, cool. So there's my derivative. All right. Well, this isn't as easy as the last one. It kind of looks like it reflected over the x-axis, though, a little bit, right? So I wonder if this is just 
f of if this is just like ln x but negated let's try it is this the graph of y equals negative ln x yeah no and it doesn't even have the same growth rate so it's not shifted so that's not it i wonder what this could be well let's look at the table this time so i'm going to build a table for ln x and i'm going to build a table for my derivative all right if i look at this table here like the values that it gave me. So I'm going to change this to, um, let's say, 0 0.511.5222.5. Okay. And so there's that. Those are not really predictable values. I don't know what's going on there. FYI, I, I do know what's going on there. This is me acting. Okay. This is my acting face. So, all right. When I come down here, this is not existing in the negatives, but then exists in the positives. So you know what? Let me focus on the positives. So I'm going to make this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So my derivative graph, 1, 1, 2, a half, 3, a third, 4, a fourth. Wait, I'm saying that out loud and I'm starting to realize something. 1 became 1. 2 became a half, three became a third, four became a fourth. I think I know what that function is. I think that function takes the x and then makes it the reciprocal. I think this is the function y equals one over x. Let's see if I'm right. Narrator voice, she is correct, everyone. She is just play acting for some suspense. All right, so let's see, are we right? We're right, I promise, we're definitely right. So I'm going to come back here. Here's f of x equals ln x. Here's f prime of x. And then I think f prime of x is the graph of y equals 1 over x. I'm right, but I'm also a little bit wrong. What's happening here? Well, I'll tell you what's happening. When you graph a derivative, the derivative is only going to graph where the original function was. 1 over x is absolutely the derivative of ln x, except it only works on the domain of ln x. So if I am talking about this as being the derivative of ln x, I would only graph it for when x is greater than 0, because ln x is only defined when x is greater than 0. So there is 1 over x, and the black one is f prime, and they perfectly, perfectly match. Yay! So we just figured out that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Cool. All right, let's play around with that a little bit more. So what if I change that ln x to an ln 2x? All right, so that's going to be ln 2x. Let me get rid of this. So here's ln 2x. Here's f prime of x. Okay, wait a second. There's ln 2x, and black is f prime. ln 2x, my f prime didn't change. ln 2x and ln x have the same derivative. What? Okay, here's what's happening. One of Mrs. Viver's favorite thing beyond chocolate chip cookies and macaroni and cheese is log laws. I love them. I love them so much. Y equals ln 2x using log laws is the same as ln 2 plus ln x. And so when I go to take the derivative of that, ln 2 is a number and it just disappears. ln 2x is just a vertical translation of ln x, so the derivative does not change at all. So we just found out that the derivative of ln 2x is still 1 over x. Okay, yeah, that's weird. Hmm, okay. Let's try one more and then I'll give you the rule. What if I did the derivative of, instead of ln 2x, let's make this the ln of 3x plus 1. Okay, so everything changed this time. But this still kind of looks like one of those 1 over x kind of graphs. So ln 3x plus 1, f prime of x. What do we think the derivative is? Well, I kind of think the derivative is one of those like 1 over x kind of graphs. Let's try 1 over x again. 
Okay, it's not the same. It's a little bit different, but they're definitely similar. I'm going to tell you what the derivative is. The derivative is going to be 3 over 3x plus 1. Okay, blue graph, black graph, they line up. Fantastic. How did I get this fraction from ln 3x plus 1? Well, I'm going to tell you. The derivative for ln, if it's ln x, the derivative is just 1 over x. If instead we take the derivative of ln f of x, the derivative is f prime of x over f of x. So when I took the derivative of ln 3x plus 1, the derivative of an ln is the derivative of the end, 3, over the end, 3x plus 1, and the ln disappears. Okay, so the derivative of logarithms does not have logarithms anymore. Well, wait a second, Mr. River. You said the ln of 2x was still 1 over x. How does that work? Well, I'll show you how that works. If I want the derivative of ln 2x, it's going to be the derivative of the end over the end, and 2 over 2x reduces to 1 over x. So my rule still works, but with some canceling, things are A-OK. -okay. Okay, so there was a graphic representation. There is going to be another video with the rules, and look out for that next. I hope everybody's having a great day.